everyone. I'm Melanie of Art Studio 320. Welcome or welcome back if you've been here before. If you haven't subscribed yet, please press that red button and don't forget to ring the bell because that way you will be notified every time I post a new video. Also, if you have an Instagram account, check me out at Art Studio 320. I post a lot of pictures there of the project I'm working on and afterwards I post sometimes behind the scenes bloopers, things like that. So check that out too. Today's video, I will be painting and repairing, not in that order, <laughs> my childhood rocking chair. And I am also doing something I have always wanted to do. I am painting a painting on a piece of furniture. I wanted to take my interpretation of one of my favorite artists, Paul Gauguin. If you don't know who that is, I will put some information in the description box, along with what I always put in there, all the materials that I use today. Speaking of, I kind of dug through my cabinet. I knew I had some chalk paint stocked away somewhere that I bought a couple years ago, and I did. DIY Debbie's Diary chalk paint, and this is Peacock. Oh no, I'm sorry. This is Mermaid Tail. My bad. And this is Antique White, General Mills. General Mills. <laughs> this is General Finishes Milk Paint, Antique White. I actually had quite a few colors of this paint and I didn't have a white and I did need a white because I needed to make some lighter colors. So yes, I needed to make tints. I have a video on tints and shades. Check it out. Stick around for this video. I think you'll really enjoy it. This is my new project. This is my childhood rocking chair. So it's old. <laughs> It was black when I was a kid and it had a gold eagle up on the top. When my kids were born, I decided to paint it blue and I put some little stencil of a bear and I really didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> but um, that's okay. That's okay. That was 30 years ago. The handle had been broken where the spiral was, but I actually broke it even more when I was trying to fix it. For this repair, Elmer's wood glue seemed like the most logical choice, although I did have a little trouble getting the cap open. It was glued shut. Now, wood glue is, is great. You just have to let it dry. And sometimes, oops, shoot. It was important for me to get that little splinter glued back on correctly so that I could get the armrest to fit snug. Now I need to glue this part to here and I need to put this peg back in here so this will line up with this piece. This is a perfect example of where I learned <laughs> by doing it the wrong way. <laughs> what I could have done is put glue on all the different parts first so I wouldn't have this problem right here. Now I'm going to wipe the glue off on the outside. I'm actually going to use a little soap and water. Um, I have like a generic Dawn in here. Just a little, just mild, mild. And I'm going to see if I can get some of this junk off. I'm going to start with a kind of a scrubby sponge. This took a little bit of doing and even a little bit of adhesive needed to be taken off, but it got done. random orbit sander to get out some of the rough spots and then applied the plastic wood to all the spots that needed to be touched up. Here I'm beginning to sand some of the wood filler off 
This is a nail set, and I used that to hammer in all the nails that were kind of popping out without damaging the chair. And in resetting the nails, I was tightening up the armrests that were loose. I tried my Ryobi cat to get in between the rungs, but it just was too big. It was time to pull out the Milwaukee oscillating saw with the finger sander attachment. Then I went back to my 60 grit block sander to smooth everything out. This is a rubber tip tool I use for clay and I decided to use it to apply the caulk because the plastic wood didn't work as well as I wanted it to around the rungs. Caulk is a good sealer and it worked pretty well. After cleaning off the rocking chair with the tack cloth, I'm finally ready to begin to paint. I'm using a combination of General Finishes, Milk Paint, Seagull Gray, and Antique White. If you take a break and you want to protect your paintbrushes, put them in a Ziploc bag. Hey everybody, I am right in the middle of priming uh, my rocking chair. I'm painting it white just to give it a base. I've done the repairs on the rocking chair. I've sanded it and sanded it and sanded it. And now I'm painting it for the goal of painting it. <laughs> After all those repairs, I still have a problem. Well, I had to repair this again. I thought my camera was on and it wasn't. I apologize, but this is a crack. It goes all the way around. In the beginning of the video, you see how this all came apart and I've glued it multiple times now. This wasn't ideal because the paint clearly is not dry yet, so I'm going to have to sand that down and paint it again, but that's, that's okay. That's not a big deal. This is the first pot paint I was introduced to a couple of years ago by the Turquoise Iris, and she is on Instagram and on YouTube, so check her out. She is quite the artist. I'm sketching out just loosely the painting that I want to show up on the seat of the chair. Now that it's all sketched out, I'm going to open up my paints and put on my very fancy palette some of the colors I'm going to start with. Here is the first painting I am using for the seat of my rocking chair. Generally, I usually start a painting at the top of my canvas, whatever that happens to be, just to protect the painting, really, so that my hand doesn't come in contact with uh, wet paint that's already been painted. If I start at the bottom, you could see how that would happen. It's an interesting experience working with chalk paint and a couple colors in milk paint. Uh, the antique white and the twilight blue. <laughs> our milk paint. These paints dry very fast. In fact, if you're really watching, you can see it dry during this time lapse. It's pretty crazy. I normally love to work with oil paints, which is really the opposite of a chalk paint because oil paint takes months to dry, actually, <laughs> which makes it fun to work with but also <laughs> it's hard to know when to stop messing with it. <laughs> this particular style of painting is very loose. It's a lot of fun and it's very relaxing. Um, it doesn't have to look realistic and I think it's beautiful. I, I like painting like this and this is why I like Paul Gauguin so much. One thing I've learned about painting is that 
the more you try and control your picture, uh, the less control you actually have. I think the more you relax, the better off you are. In other words, it's a mental game. So if you stop thinking so much, you will probably produce a, a nicer painting and you will enjoy the process more. The parts of this painting that I chose uh, were the mountains and the trees and the water. If you watch the water, the blue on the bottom, you can see how fast it dries. That, that's incredible. As I painted this chair, I didn't have a well thought out plan. I kind of let it just sort of do its thing <laughs> as I went along. And I realized that the painting on the seat, the colors could kind of go up the, the spindles or the rungs and, go, and flow from there, really. Well, hello, I am three quarters of the way through with painting my rocking chair. And I just wanted to update you just a bit, and let you know um, the bulk of the painting or one of the paintings, I'm using three different paintings and kind of merging them and um, changing them up a little bit. The seat part of the rocking chair is one painting and it's somewhat like this minus this beautiful naked woman. <laughs> it's a child's rocking chair. Then what I did is I took the colors wherever one of the spindles happened to be, I pulled the color up out of that, except the big ones I pulled from the front on the headpiece. And then on the arms, I took the little garden at the bottom and expanded it onto the armrest. So on the back, I'm going to be taking this part of the painting and adding it here. And of course, it's not gonna be exact. I'm not trying to copy exact. I, I want the essence of Paul Gauguin's paintings. So the bottom here, the rocker part, I'm going to pull the colors from here down here, like I did with the seats on to this part. I'm gonna start now. <laughs> Here's a second look at the painting I'm using for the back of the chair, and I'm focusing on the bottom of this painting, as you can see. I'm approaching this painting a little bit differently than I did on the front of the chair, simply because it's laid out a little bit differently and the way I mix the paints, it was easier for me to paint it like this, almost like a paint by number, I hate to say. But then I went back in and added texture and more color. I used the colors from the back of the chair and brought them down to the bottom so that there was some consistency to the back of the chair and to the front of the chair. I will probably have to uh, put some polyurethane on the bottom because that's where there's going to be the most wear and even just putting it on the table 
I could see that the paint was wearing down before I had done anything at all. And if the future of this chair sees some more action, <laughs> I will probably put polyurethane on the whole thing to protect it. Or maybe some gator hide from Tixie Bell. After I finished painting the bottom of the chair for the first time, I realized that the colors were too pastel. So I went back and I put some more texture and made it a little darker. All right, the last step is my favorite thing in the whole world right now. <laughs> Dixie Bell, Big Mama's Butter. It smells so good. I liked how the Dixie Bell, Big Mama's Butter worked really well with the chalk paint on my last project. So I decided to try it on the rocking chair. However, I do think that eventually I will have to put something a little tougher on it or it just won't last. I do really like how it deepened the color. Looks great. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed marrying two things that I really love. I love to refinish furniture, but I'm kind of a newbie in the furniture community. I'm still trying to get my name out there. And I've actually been a fine artist and a teacher for over 30 years. So marrying them together kind of warms my heart and, and makes me excited about what's to come for me because I have a lot of ideas rolling around in that head of mine. Yikes. <laughs> and new things come to me all the time. I'm always checking out other people's channels and I sure hope that you will subscribe and stick around and see what I come up with next. Thank you for being here today. See you next time.